What's up, landlords? I found some squatters from hell. Cover your eyes, kids, and anyone dreaming of owning their own home. Um, the house from hell. Um, I've been calling it Mimi's little house of horrors. The home was vandalized by a former tenant who was evicted more than a year ago. And what she wrote in here is now you won't be able to rent this again. Ha ha. There is not a surface in this home that doesn't need fixing. We have an expression, if it smells, it won't sell. And obviously, I am putting that to the test. And whatever you do, nobody has any idea what's actually in there. Don't open the fridge in the basement. Oh! Oh! Did you get that? <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever smelled anything like that before. But this house. I would say we've had at least 250 phone calls today. Yes, this house put on the market Tuesday is selling for almost $600,000 cash. But I list vacant houses all the time. I have not seen this kind of hysteria even in this market. In Colorado, buyers are so eager to get into the housing market, they're willing to pay cash for homes like this one as is. It's going to take 150000 to make this house livable. The Colorado Springs market that normally has 2,500 homes for sale on any given day is down to fewer than 400. I listed it yesterday afternoon and my phone started ringing yesterday afternoon for showings. She says the owner was forced to sell before foreclosures opened back up at the end of the month. This formerly majestic five bedroom, four bath, three car garage home was once the seller's pride and joy. Now it's every landlord's nightmare. Her listing holds nothing back. I wanted them to know that they were getting a damaged house with a lot of potential. Even still, with all of its flaws, the home has been viewed more than 130,000 times on Zillow since it was posted on Tuesday, and the listing agent has already received 16 written offers. People understand houses more when you tell them a story. Mimi hopes this story will have a happy ending for whoever lives here next. Somebody will come in and they will get rid of the anger and anguish that went on here and it will be a cherished place to live. So I looked up this realtor and I ended up finding her personal channel and she did a complete walkthrough, a, a lot more details in that one. So I'm gonna share that one now. Hi, this is Mimi Foster with Falcon Property Solutions. I received a call this week from an out-of-state owner who had recently evicted a disgruntled tenant who hadn't paid rent for many months, and the owner was interested in possibly selling. The home is in the Broadmoor Bluffs area of Colorado Springs, but I was discouraged as I surveyed the neglect not only in the yard, but also in the wood rut in all of the window frames. But in decades of being a real estate agent and a landlord, Nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to encounter. This is a story about a tenant from hell and every landlord's nightmare. Put on your face mask and let's go inside and see what kind of damage an angry tenant can do. The first thing you notice when you walk in is not the destruction, but the overwhelming smell as you open the front door. There was human and animal feces left in the living room to greet you as you walk in. I felt like I'd stepped into the twilight zone as I looked around and couldn't find a visible surface that hadn't been spray painted with vulgarities. In addition to the spray paint, the carpets were saturated with urine throughout the house, and it's my understanding that the tenant had a menagerie of animals. After she got done with her spray paint, she took a big hammer and damaged most of the walls. The owner moved out of state over a decade ago. It appears the property manager hasn't even set foot in the property in at least that long. The person on the lease isn't the person who's been living there. 
Nobody knows what happened to the original lessee, but it's believed that she died and then a relative moved in. And it's the relative who moved in that did all of this damage after she'd been evicted. She spray painted all of the appliances, the sink, the cupboards, the countertops, the pantry. She also took the stove and dishwasher, but that's probably pretty insignificant under the circumstances. It's my understanding she had cats, but tragically, when she moved out, she left two of them in the bathroom. It appears as though they've been there for quite some time. The stories from the neighbors and the owner are endless. The nightmare tenant contracted to have a new roof put on. She told the roofing company that she was the owner. The first time the owner heard of it was when the roofer started demanding payment. In addition to everything else, they did a horrible job on the installation of the roof. When the tenant took possession, the house was pristine. It was all painted white and absolutely spotless. So here's part of what's making me really angry about this. The property manager told the owner that the tenant filed a motion asking to be allowed back into the house to get her things after she had been evicted. The property manager said that request was granted and she was allowed in. But here's the rub. If you actually do a sheriff's eviction, all of her stuff would have been outside and not only would nothing be left inside, but the courts would never have allowed her back in. From all accounts, this lady was crazy as a bed bug. The neighbors said they danced a jig when this nightmare tenant who had been a thorn in their side for years moved out. This room was really creepy. The plastic bins there were full of animal feces. I don't have any idea what she kept in there and the freezer was full of meat and has had no electricity to it for months. The neighbors said that it took months for her to move out, which also leads me to believe that there's something fishy about the property manager's accounting. Something smells stronger than the odor in this house and I intend to pursue it all of this damage was done after the tenant had been evicted. One of the morals of this story is to hire a property management company that's credible. I'm going after one that's not.
It looks like she ran out of spray paint since this is the only room in the house she didn't touch. If I ever get resolution to any of this, I'll do a follow-up video and let you know how it turned out. Thanks for watching. I wish somebody would name drop this crazy squatter's identity so we can, like, you know, I don't know, make sure we avoid her, like committing fraud, lying to a uh, roofing company, saying you're the owner, wreaking havoc around the neighborhood. No joke. So I looked up the property. Let me show you this. Uh, it looks like somebody rehabbed it. It's all good to go now. Um, it was sold in 2021 for 580, and um, Zillow estimates it's worth 833 right now. I kind of was wondering the story of the previous owner, the landlord, and I looked up the price they got it at in 2001. The landlord bought it for, you know, just over 200000 So when they ended up exiting, even though there was a crazy squatter situation and the place was damaged, they still made a pretty hefty profit on that. Um, let me just go ahead and point out one last thing. Even though, obviously, it's the squatter's fault, you know, nobody would blame the landlord for this situation, the fraud with the roofing company and everything, but... I just recently saw a story in Georgia where the city councilwoman is actually trying to go after the landlords when squatters move into a vacant property, almost like it's the landlord's fault. So I'm just going to show you one more story that's in a different state. Um, maybe it could allude to the future fate of landlords when squatters sneak in. You never know, but it's good to be aware of it. It's a situation with some neighbors as a nightmare. Now, they're relieved that police arrested several people, and this video shows officers surrounding the home. Channel 2 Tom Jones is live in the city of South Fulton, and Tom, police say they found stolen cars. That's right, Linda. Police say they found two stolen cars in this home, along with a stolen gun, stolen IDs, and credit cards. Neighbors say the people who lived here kept them up at all times of night with parties and other non-neighborly activities. It was always something going on in that house. People who live in the Vaxton Reserve community say they've lost plenty of sleep the last four months because of the nightmare neighbors in this home. A lot of partying. They had a um, illegal strip club on the weekends. They say there was piles of trash at the home. People there raced in the streets. They say the air often reeked of marijuana. There was sporadic gunfire and horses. They would get a uh, live horses. One day they had live horses. They say they complained to police, but nothing happened. Happened. Then Sunday morning, neighbors watched as a SWAT team marched toward the home. They put the gun in. Officers went inside and one by one. That's number four. Arrested four people. All these uh, individuals were charged uh, with various uh, felony crimes. Police say that morning an officer came to the home after a license plate reader indicated a stolen car was there. Officers say the driver refused to come out. Once inside, police say they found another stolen car, stolen IDs and credit cards. There was a uh, weapon, a stolen weapon that was recovered from the residence. Police say the home was a mess inside. Neighbors say they learned squatters lived here. They say it took police a while, but they are extremely happy their sleepless nights are over. Um, we were out walking this morning. And we all looked at each other like, oh, my God, we finally had a good night's sleep. And police have been driving by, making sure no one else comes back to this home. The councilwoman for this area confirmed squatters live here. She says the city council is looking at ways to hold investment companies, corporations, and people who own these vacant homes accountable because she says these vacant homes often breed criminal activity. No, that is crazy. That just kind of makes me mad a little bit because obviously the squatters are breaking the law to get inside the property. They're not welcomed. It, you know, the landlord had nothing to do with it. And um, just because they're criminals and they break the law and stuff and they just happen to be residing in a landlord's property, how is it the landlord's fault? It's just crazy. I don't know. I think that's it for me today.